Hey mamas, welcome. In today's homeschool update, I'm gonna be talking about curriculum as I always do. I'm also excited to share with you a mini book haul as well as some confessions of a homeschool mom, some things that I've been struggling with. First things first, we have been doing our morning binder time and it has been so wonderful this past month. If you saw one of my previous homeschool updates, I did talk through a morning binder that I created and I will also link that for you below as well. It's free but I essentially go through the calendar, the weather, time, money, all of those things with both my kids. Once we were finished with our calendar and weather, things like that, we moved on to studying about people in black history and we use these books in particular as our main sources. As we studied about different people in black history, we also integrated geography. And the way we did that was we would read about a person and at the beginning of each of the biographies, they typically shared where the person grew up and so we would locate that on the map so we have a big map of the United States and then I had my girls just color that state and label it so my oldest child was able to kind of spell out most of the states and then my youngest would just color the state and also label it with the state abbreviation in my last homeschool update I talked about how I wanted to focus just on artists so musicians and visual artists, sculptors, things like that. In the end, we wound up studying Alma Woodsy Thomas, who was a painter, Augusta Savage, who was a sculptor, Oscar Michu, which I hope I'm saying that correctly, and he was a filmmaker, Phyllis Wheatley, who was a poet, Prince, who was obviously a musician, Josephine Baker, who was a famous jazz singer. And so we got to the end of February and I was like, okay, it's time for us to write a letter to one of these people. And what we're going to include in that letter is things that we really loved learning about them, things that stood out to us, and any lingering questions we have that we want to learn more about that maybe wasn't in the written text. And so we got to this point, my oldest daughter was like, mommy, which one of these people is alive? And I kind of like looked around like, well, none of them are. And so what we wound up doing is we looked through the books again and we wound up choosing Oprah Winfrey. And right now she is working on crafting a letter to Oprah Winfrey. So I just mentioned that these two books were great resources. These are ones that we already had on hand, but I went to my local library and picked up this book, which I absolutely love for black history. It goes into so much much detail from ancient times until now and it's just so rich as far as all of the information that you get like my daughter was enthralled the other thing that I absolutely loved and scored was this book so this is timelines from black history and it's not something that I actually saw in the library but I came across it on Amazon and so this book is something that I did eventually purchase because I loved it so much and that the other one is one that came up for me, so I was like, let's do this. A picture book that I picked up, which is so popular, is called Change Sings. And I really loved reading this with my daughters, especially my oldest daughter. We just went in on it and we analyzed all of the different pictures, the words. And so it was, it was just a wonderful book for us to read. So beautifully written, so beautifully illustrated. And it's something that I'm so excited to come back to over and over again. The reason why I loved reading this book with my daughter during this particular time in our studies is because I wanted her to understand the broader implications of black history when it comes to justice efforts. And so this book is such a beautiful book to illustrate and help a child understand that. Now that I've shown you some of these first books that I bought, I'm gonna just go ahead and share the rest of them with you. And this is like my mini book haul. So the other book that I bought is Little Dreamers, uh, visionary women around the world and this is going to take us into the month of March which is Women's History Month so we're basically gonna follow the same format that we did for studying people in black history and we're just going to pick and choose a few women to focus on and maybe do another letter writing activity as well the other books that I picked up which I'm so excited about are focus on Puerto Rico. My family is from Puerto Rico as well as the Dominican Republic. So when I saw these books, I, first of all, I was shocked because I never 
I, or let me not say never, but I rarely see books about Puerto Rico. The first one is called Good Night Puerto Rico. And I was so, so excited to see this. It takes you through Puerto Rico. And so this is San Juan, which is famous for all of the colorful buildings and all the different parks and places that are really well known in Puerto Rico, beaches, all kinds of different things. The next book is called Taino Tales, The Secret of the Hummingbird. And this is so close to my heart because I actually have Taino heritage. A lot of Puerto Rican people do as well. Quick history about that. Tainos are indigenous people of Puerto Rico. And a long time ago, the conquistadores from Spain invaded and annihilated most of all of the people there and so I have a really interesting story that's been passed down from generations and that is that a great 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 grandmother of mine who was Taino hid in a cave and her village was completely wiped out but she survived so it's a crazy story and this is why when I found this book I was like oh my gosh I need to read this to my girls this author in particular Vicki Weber she has um, a couple of books that are coming out one in particular is about the Koki and how I guess the history of the Koki or something like that so I actually order that it's like on back order there's another book by a different author that I can't remember now but I'll pop it on the screen here and show you I'm just so excited to find some of these books because I've been hard pressed to find books about Puerto Rico and it's important for me to pass that on to my kids and to show them and share them things about Puerto Rico where you know their ancestors are from their family is from all of these books and all this talk about history has really got me thinking about looking into social studies curriculum one curriculum in particular that I hear a lot of people talking about is the story of the world it was a little off-putting at first because I'm like, okay, how can you condense the story of the entire world in one book or a series of books? But that's not what it is at all. It actually serves as a spine, which means that it's a base curriculum for you to build off of. And so there are certain things that you'll focus on and, and I think it's divided into time periods. So the reason why I mentioned this one is because when I was at my local library, I noticed that they had the story of the world and I was like, okay, let me just get this book and look into it to see See what it's about now I'm not gonna lie I completely forgot to pick it up after I saw it because my focus was in another place and so I'm hoping that I can go back and get that at the library and then get a, good, a better understanding of whether or not this might be good for us the other thing that I'm considering is just doing what we have been doing which is kind of letting the social studies happen organically so kind of taking an unschooling approach we had a moment this past fall I believe where um, Pocahontas came up and I can't remember it was if it was because we had seen the movie my daughters were like oh we want to learn about Pocahontas let like let's learn about her and so I pulled up a video from I think it was like National Geographic or the History Channel and we learned about Pocahontas <laughs> what I did with them is I had them compare the real story and some of the real facts to the fake story and what we see in Disney after the video I had the kids draw out two pictures to compare facts and fiction and then for my oldest daughter I had her write sentences about the picture so that was just such a great way for us to organically study Pocahontas right now my thought process is I want to look into doing some maybe curriculum work but kind of leaving it more open so that we can have organic opportunities for the kids to learn things that they're really, really interested in. And the other thing I really want to weave in is geography. So being able to study about places and landforms, things like that. Totally moving on and changing course, I want to talk about a resource that has been so fantastic for my child to practice typing. A while ago, my husband and I had a consensus about wanting Sayla, our oldest daughter, to learn typing. Recently, I just came across an article that has all of these different free online games for a child to do to practice typing. And so she's already started to do this. She loves it. Right now she is doing this practice on my laptop. So I want to slowly move her away from that and get her onto her tablet. I'm not sure about any apps for the Kindle Fire. If you know of any, please comment below and let me know because I'm really looking for something like that. Now moving on to reading curriculum. So particularly I'm talking about my oldest daughter, Sayla, who is working through 
through Logic of English Foundations Level C. As we have been steadily moving through this level, I've been thinking about whether or not I want to continue with this curriculum so it does go up to level D or if I should you know, go a different route. And I did some research, I looked at level D and I feel like it's probably going to be our best bet as far as what she should do next. The only thing about it is that <laughs> The, they have books that they suggest that you get that will accompany the curriculum. So these are readers that are, you know, just widely published. So like for instance, the Little Bear book, that is something that you can get anytime, anywhere. It's not tied to a particular curriculum. So they're selling that at a crazy expensive price and it just kind of dawned on me like, hey, I can actually go to the library and get these books. Now on to some confessions of a homeschool mom. The first thing is, Man, it has been so tough for me recently and I think that's because I started back at my part-time job, which is um, being an adjunct professor at my local university. This has put a lot of strain on me as far as time. I find that I, you know, everything I'm doing during my day is a major time suck in a good way because these are all good things, right? So I homeschool and I don't do anything else during the homeschooling day. So I have like the focus turned on on my phone and you know, I'm just, I'm all in. And then, you know, the afternoon hits and my class is at 3.30 in the afternoon. So I have to like pack up and get ready and go to that. And then I have YouTube and YouTube is fantastic. This is something that I am so passionate about and I love doing, but it really does take a lot of time. I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out like where to fit things in. And then to top it all off, my kids are deciding to wake up earlier and earlier and earlier, which means that I have less time to spend doing other things, getting some tasks completed for my work. And I, I, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I know some of you mamas out there are also working moms, um, whether that's full-time or part-time. So, you know, I, I totally empathize with you and I'm still, I'm trying to figure it out myself. There you go, confession number one. Ah, the other confession that I feel like kind of goes with this a little bit is that I struggle with consistency. Work-life balance is like exponentially hard when you're not consistent with things. So I made this big transition, I started up my class again and I have to figure out how to navigate that. But also, you know, really build up consistency um, with all the things that I'm doing and consistency with relationships, with people who I love and care about. I am like trying my best to take it one day at a time and I don't mean that as a cliche, I really truly mean that. Like I have to make sure that every minute of my day is used purposefully. And so for me, what that looks like is, you know, not spending so much time or any time really doing social media, which for me, as in, as, you know, as someone on YouTube, it's important for me to kind of, you know, engage in that way. But at the same time, I find myself like getting too caught up in things. And so I'm trying to find that balance so that I don't spend time with things that I, you know, are, are going to be idle for me and take away from the things that I really want to do and are really important to me. So that's confession number two. And please leave me a comment below if this resonates with you, if you can empathize with this, because I think it's important for us as moms to know that we're not alone in this. And we can kind of have that in our head, but when we actually read a comment that somebody says, oh, I can really empathize with this, it makes a difference. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Take care, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.